I can't see where I'm going. Let's get out of here before we get hurt. Adam holds out the glowing jar. The flashlight fish senses the friendly dark of the cave. Gathering courage, it swims out of the jar and settles down between two rocks. What a relief! Now I can see where I'm going! Adam puts the empty jar into his recycle bag. The flashlight fish's steady glow reveals an opening clogged with brownish rocks. It looks almost like a wall of stones. Adam reaches up and pulls on one of the brownish rocks. It falls easily to the floor of the cave. A strange green light seeps through the small hole. Another rock pulls out easily. It must not have been there very long. Those are coming out, no problemo. Yeah, it feels more to me like somebody put these here. The greenish color of the water intensifies as the rocks come out. I think something's happening to the water, Adam. I'm getting dizzy. My sonar feels a little off or something. Should I stop? No, we've got to find out what's on the other side. The light strikes something hidden behind the rocks. A metal box has been concealed in a pile of rocks. Bummer, it's locked. The key turns halfway in the lock and then stops. It seems that salt water has rusted the mechanism. Adam eases the lock with the oily rag. The key turns smoothly in the oiled lock. The box pops open to reveal a suit of protective clothing. Bizarre. What is it? I've seen clothes like this. They protect your skin from chemicals. Armor for a modern night. Do you suppose this is it? <laughs> Adam feels an immediate relief. Whatever was in the water was making it really hard to think. Adam, 
I can't go any farther. Whatever is in this water is really affecting me. I'll wait right here as long as I can take it. Adam signals OK to Delphinius. A group of metal drums lie rusting in this hidden spot. A familiar greenish glow seeps from the rusting patches in the metal. Now Adam realizes what the oracle meant by poison of the deep. The deadly poison which lurks in the drums has been slowly released into the water, bringing disaster to the reef. Adam fixes the sonar transmitter to the float. Adam attaches the impromptu satellite buoy to the cable. turns on the transmitter and attaches his improvised satellite buoy to the barrel. The float rises toward the surface. The transmitter is emitting a constant, powerful signal. Adam watches from a distance as the divers carefully collect the drums. Grimly, they bear them to the surface and stow them on the boat for safe disposal on land. Adam gives the metal box and suit as evidence of illegal dumping. He returns to the reef to find Delphinius and continue the search for Cetus. Adam, you did it! The poison is gone! The first part of the prophecy is fulfilled. They've taken it away, that's true. But I'm afraid it will be a long time before anything can survive here. We also have to worry about catching the people who did this. It looks to me like they've been using this spot for a while. But that's something I'll have to leave up to my dad. And we still haven't found Cetus. The harpoon gun is a reminder of the dreadful practice of whale hunting. This one has been triggered. The cable from the harpoon is still attached to the gun. The ship's cabin door is jammed shut. A cable from the harpoon gun is caught in a corner of the cabin door. like the looks of it here. Adam! But behind you! Flesh Eater, run! Adam and Delphinius flee in terror from the huge, flesh-eating monster. <laughs> With a feeling of utter helplessness, Adam prepares to feel the sharp bite of Flesh Eater's jaws. The monster is so close that his hot wake ruffles the back of Adam's neck. In their panicked terror of the danger behind them, Adam and Delphinius failed to notice the danger in front of them. 
They both plow head first into the drift net. The nylon mesh wraps its arms around them. The two are trapped. The Phineas were trapped. Adam, you've got to save yourself. I'll never get out of this thing, but you still have a chance. I won't leave you, Dell. So what? We both end up manta food? Do it, Adam. Save yourself. Adam waits for the manta to finish them off. Two helpless victims trapped in the net. To his surprise, Flesh Eater only circles them. Adam maneuvers the sharp shell around and begins to rub it against the nylon net. The shell saws through the nylon, loosening the net's grasp on Adam. He's free! You did it, Adam! Now get out of here, fast! Are you crazy? What kind of friend do you think I am? Adam turns back frantically to cut loose his friend. But before he can free Delphinius, Flesh Eater swoops in. Enraged to see one of his victims escape and determined not to lose the other, he seizes the net with poor Delphinius still in it and knocks Adam aside with one flick of his huge wing. Adam, find Cetus. Only he can save me now. finds himself suddenly alone. The drift net with its precious cargo and the monster are gone. What on earth, Adam thinks, can he do now? And will he ever see Delphinius again? <laughs>